Hey guys, it's Sebastian from Master Sebi, and today we are going to review the Deserve EDU MasterCard. This is probably going to be one of the best cards if you are an international student based off how the card works. Be aware that they did reach out to me asking me to review this product, and my one requirement for all reviews is that I can be as honest as I want, and then I can list both pros as well as cons, just because in most cases, there are going to be some opportunity costs. Starting off with the thing that makes this card so unique, you do not need a social security number to apply for this card if you are an international student. If you're an international student, then building credit is probably one of the more difficult things, especially if you don't have an SSN or ITIN. The card does not have an annual fee, and you can get a credit limit of up to $5,000. For most people holding the EDU card, you're going to be eligible for a credit limit increase within the first 90 days. A lot of that is going to depend on your payment history as well as the utilization. One other thing too is that the card has no foreign transaction fees, so if you're someone traveling a lot and traveling back home, this helps a lot. Beyond that, you're going to get 1% back on all of your purchases, and they do have a lot of other benefits that I'll run through afterwards. A good example of this would be Amazon Prime Student for free. One of the pretty cool things about this company is that since they are doing their own underwriting, they're basically using data science to make more educated decisions. To make this work and to limit fraud on their end, they are going to need your student visa, your I-20, as well as proof of a US bank account balance. They're also going to need your passport ID, and again, I think this is all fine, especially since it's not secured like a lot of the other products. If you're someone in this situation who doesn't have an SSN or an I-10, then you basically have two other options. Option number one is Citibank, which is pretty good if internationals, and option number two is Bank of America. With Bank of America, I have heard that they typically want to see higher balances, so typically more than $10,000 in your bank account before approving you. This means that if you do want to apply, again, go and branch at some point and make sure you have a pretty sizable balance before making that application. So again, before paying off your tuition or some of your other expenses, apply for that card. On the flip side on City's end, the card they have is a City Thank You Preferred card for students. The main issue being that it does kind of lock you out of Thank You cards for at least 24 months, given how their rules work. If you are someone looking to start at City Clock, again, it might not be the best move. I'll probably make a future video comparing all three of these cards as kind of a spreadsheet and also another one comparing all student cards in the future, but let's jump back to the Deserve card. With this card, you do have a bunch of different perks, so you have cell phone protection up to $600 if it's stolen or damaged. You also have car CDW, you have travel insurances, instead and warranty up to 12 months, roadside assistance, price protection, and ID theft. Most of these perks are pretty solid, there are better cards that have better versions of this, but again, you're likely looking at something like the Chase Sapphire Reserve, which is probably about a year and a half down the road. As a starting point, and again as your first card, I don't think these perks are bad at all. Beyond this, they do have a few other perks, such as Prime Student for free. By definition, this means that you're getting $59 in value if you would have otherwise paid for Amazon Prime for students. You can also get $100 off T-Mobile, and they also have some other deals of Lemonade as well as Feather. To me, I think this makes a lot of sense, and again, if I were to create my own credit card, I'd probably do the same thing, add a lot of other benefits on the side that other cards don't offer. To summarize everything, I think this card is pretty competitive for what it is, and it does the job it needs to do. Your goal as a student is to get on the board to just get any card in order to build that history, ideally a card that has no annual fee and gives you some perks. This card does exactly that, and it even works for international students who don't have an SSN. 1% back and you don't need to have a deposit or a cosigner, that just makes a lot of sense to me. On the flip side, if you are someone with more substantial funds, and again, if you're an international student paying pretty high tuition, you probably will have money flowing through your accounts, then I think the Bank of America setup might make a bit more sense, depending on whether you get approved. If you're someone who's not looking to get City Thank You cards anytime soon, then I think the City card might also make sense. For a lot of what we talked about, we are talking about the short term, so in terms of as a student, but if we do look at the long term, there are a few other factors to consider. For most people who have the EDU card, they're going to be eligible for a promotion to the Pro card either upon graduation or depending on their credit profile or score. I'm not going to get too much into the Pro card in this video, but it does earn 3% back on travel and entertainments. 
You also get 2% back on restaurants as well as 1% back on everything else, but 2% in less categories aren't really important to me just because there are cards that earn 2% on everything. With Bank of America, you don't really have that many good product change options unless you are someone with substantial funds and you want to build that Bank of America end game setup where you need $100,000 in capital. As a reminder, this isn't necessarily just in your checking account. It can be in your investment accounts in different ETFs or different stock holdings. With Citi, you should be able to product change either to the Costco card, the dividend card, or the double cash card, and all of these are pretty viable long-term cards depending on your specific needs. As a student, your goal is pretty much to get on the board in terms of your credit score, ideally with something that doesn't have a deposit or an annual fee. You want it to be a card that you can keep long-term, so if they do try to charge you $39, which Bank of America sometimes does, then I probably wouldn't take that offer. The reason for this is because your first card is a card that you don't necessarily need to use a lot in the future. It's just a card that you need to keep alive. It's basically the starting point for your base. For most people in the mid game or late game, you probably kept your oldest card because it doesn't have an annual fee. Even if you don't really use it, it helps the average age of your accounts. And again, it's what got you started. On that note, if you are looking to apply for the card and you want to support our channel, an easy way to do that would be to apply for the card using the links on our sites. So I hope that was helpful and let me know if you guys have any questions. My question for you guys is what are your thoughts on this card? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, it really helps us out. And if you know anyone else who benefit from what we just talked about, feel free to share this video with them because it's probably going to help them out. But otherwise, hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time.